uh, 70 agents at our company now. And Great. so, yeah, last time you and I talked, the company didn't even launch yet. So we've been making a lot of traction. So what I was hoping to do today, Ricky, was answer a lot of our agents have some questions around building their business through direct prospecting and uh, mindset and all the things that you talk about anyways. And so appreciate you doing this for our company. I think it's going to help a lot of our agents start to take action and do some of the things to overcome their fears. And so I'm going to kick it off with the first question, if you don't mind. And, and that's for a lot of agents getting into the industry. We've got a lot of brand new agents coming to our company. They're just so intimidated by prospecting the, the, the thought of it because they don't come from a business or a direct sales background. Yeah. How do they get that mindset of just start, just take action? What was your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, my first question is what else are you going to do? You know, I mean, what, what else is there to do? We're, we're, we're salespeople, you know, like we're in a sales business. We've got to talk to people. We've got to sell stuff. That's our job. I mean, I, I really don't know what else there is to do. Okay. So maybe give me some examples of what they're doing besides prospecting. And then maybe I could start to try to tell you why you shouldn't do that. Yeah. So I think for a lot of agents getting into the business, they don't know what it is and what it is not, right? It all starts with our, and I say our, it's the industry's fault with not setting good expectations with these brand new agents of what real estate is and what real estate is not. And so they get into the business thinking that, okay, I got my license, Ricky. Uh, how come the phone's not ringing? Look, there's my license. How come my friends and my family members, are out? they're just thinking that they're going to be working their sphere of influence and they quickly find out Dude, the, ring, the phone doesn't just start ringing off the hook after you pass your test. You've got to go out there and make it happen. And so we talk about three ways to grow a business. Your database, past client centers of influence, direct prospecting, which is what you and I teach, Ricky, and then uh, spending money on marketing and leads. And so mm -hmm. those three things are where their minds are at. But to get them started, just being so uncomfortable uh, calling yeah. strangers, right? Yeah. Well, the... Uh as far as getting your license and thinking the phone's going to ring, that's normal. Everybody goes through that. So, but the, the, that's what separates the good agents and the great agents. Like the great agents recognize, okay, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to move to the next level and the next level and the next level. Um, and your friends and family aren't going to use you when you're new anyway, because they know that you're new. <laughs> you know, they're like going to sit back and watch and see if you're going to flip or flop. You know, they don't know, you know, they don't necessarily trust you as an agent, even though they, love you as a person, they don't really, you don't have any experience. So they're definitely not going to use you. You know what I'm saying? I love it. So I think that, you know, when I started, I didn't do sphere of influence. I dove straight into strangers because I knew that my sphere of influence, A, probably wouldn't use me because I'm new. And B, I didn't want them to feel like I was trying to be a sleazy salesperson and trying to sell them something and have an awkward Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I knew that if I couldn't sell people I didn't know, then I wasn't going to make it anyway. So I just wanted to jump right on that wagon and kind of see if I could conquer that. So as far as like feeling comfortable talking to strangers, the thing is you have to ask yourself is, is why am I calling these strangers? Am I calling these strangers because I'm just trying to do a deal or am I calling these strangers to actually help them? You see, when people buy and sell property, they're doing it for a bigger reason other than just buying or selling a piece of property. You know, their mom died, their kids went to school, they lost a job, got a job, they want a bigger house. Like there's something going on in their life above the deal. And when you start to tap into why people are doing what they're doing, and you start to try to help them with that, not buying or selling, but help them with what they're actually trying to accomplish, now we're getting somewhere. We're building a relationship. And when you stand behind your intent that you're there to help, not just to make money, you know, then, then you, you can feel confident because it's like, if you talk to somebody who's mean to you or who doesn't appreciate you or who doesn't think that you're telling them the truth, when you say that you care and you're here to help, then that's their loss. You know, you have to be so confident in yourself that it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. You know what you think about you. You know, and it's like, I'm here to help people. Yeah. You know, if you don't want my help, that's fine. But at the end of the day, I think what's the most scariest part of it all is that as you're filtering through the population, as you're making phone calls, as you're doing whatever it is you do to create business, there's a good chance 70% of people are either not going to like you or they already have an agent or whatever. There's 70% of people that 
are just not going to do business with you for whatever reason. And that's what everybody's scared of. And that's what they're focused on is the 70%. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you would literally focus on that 20% of people you talk to that love you and that are going to do business with you for the rest of their life and realize that you have to talk to hundred percent of the people to get that 20%, you know, and we're not even going to worry about the 70% because the thing is that 70%, them turning their backs on us and going the other way or cussing us out or hanging up on us or whatever they do. That's a great thing because that failure and rejection is necessary for success. A and B when they turn their back on you, it's like, great. I can spend that time that I wasn't going to spend on that person on these other people that want to do business with me. There's literally no way in the world that you can lose in, in this game. There's no way. And people are just, it's, it's your perception. The people that are scared are worried about the wrong things at the end of the day. I love it, dude. My big takeaway, what you just said, a huge epiphany. I hope people will hear this either now or in the replay. Ricky just said, you have to go through the 70% that give you some type of rejection to get to the people that want your help. You can't have it any other way. So the other question I've got, Ricky, and then I'm going to open this up for our agents that's the first struggle we have uh, at our company is getting people to do it. And then the second biggest thing that we have at our company is, and here's my belief. My belief is I don't care what the strategy is. I don't care what you're doing. Everything works. You and Ricky, you and I, Ricky have talked about that a thousand times. I care about consistency. And so after we get an agent, Ricky, to take action, what's your advice on some agent staying consistent? Because an agent will do it for a week or two, get a little bit of success, get a little bit busy, and then they're off their schedule, they're off prospecting, and they're, they're just, you know, they got busy. Like I say, I think all these questions are just normal. You know, it's normal for people to be scared to talk to people. It's normal for people to be new and think business is just going to roll in. You know, and it's normal to go through the stage of finding a little success and then kind of taking a break for a second and thinking, okay, uh, you know, I, I made it or whatever. But through all these stages and through doing all this and getting the experience behind the business and the reality of the situation, you start to realize after you do slack back a little bit after you find a little success that, oh, wait, you know, two months later, I didn't have any closings for three months. I'm not going to do that again. I'm never going to slack off again. And so a lot of us have to go through this stage of, you know, lack of production because we had lack of action because we found a little success to realize that we can't slack off on action ever for even a second. And it's good. It, it, the thing is, is your action, it's a lag business. You know, the actions you take today pay you 30, 60, 90, but six months, a year out, two years, five years, your actions are paying you later on everything. Why not stockpile as much of that as you possibly can so that you have it? That's how you get to consistent business where you're having closings every month. You know, you, you have to get into this consistency of action that's going to create consistency of sales. You know, if you if you're not if you don't have consistent action, you don't have consistent sales. Period. So it's you have to ask yourself, do I really want this? You know, like is this it, but then you have to think about the alternative. Okay. If I wasn't selling real estate, what would I do? Work at a restaurant, roof houses, you know, what, what else would I do? Right. And if you think about real estate as a job and you treat it like a nine to five job, it'll be the best paying job you ever had. And I think the problem is, is that we're focusing too much on the results. Mm. Now you're looking at, you're looking at, okay, I made 30,000 this month. You know, when you should be saying, how many people did I talk to today? You know, it's like the 30,000, that's, you know, that we have to stop looking at the results and we have to start focusing on our daily actions. You know, what did we do today, right? Did we give it everything we had today? Did we leave every drop of blood at the office today? Did I pass out because I was so tired from working so hard or, or did I have trouble going to sleep because I know I didn't put in as much as I could, you know? And so it, it becomes a thing like a personal challenge of yourself to, you know, am I giving it all that I have to provide for my family and to succeed to my full potential? You know what I mean? And yeah. so that it's a, it's a personal thing. You have to ask yourself, do you really want it? Yeah. One of our core beliefs at our company is actions before outcomes, right? So stop being attached to the outcome. 
be obsessed with the actions. I love it. All right, so let me open it up to some of our agents. Jimmy, I think you're unmuted right now. Go ahead, buddy, if you got your first questions ready. Yeah, I guess my question is, when you first started, um, did, you, did you go like expires or did you go FISBOs or did you just, you know, how did you start cold calling? Or who did you start calling? Like, where did you start building your business? I only did circle prospecting from day one. Um, once I got a little further into the business, you know, I dabbled with expireds and for sale by owners only briefly. Um, no, I just, I just dove right in. And, you know, in 2002, when I got in the business, there was no dialer. There was no, you know, there was no systems where you just click a button and you find thousands of phone numbers. I had to look these numbers up individually and dial them all with my finger. Um, it was a grueling process that I enjoyed at the time, but I didn't know that the tech, where technology was going to go. Now looking back on it, it's crazy what I had to go through to do what, see, it takes me an hour and a half now to call a hundred people to find the numbers and call them where it was taking me 15 hours to look up a hundred people and dial them 10 times faster. I'm doing things 10 times. So no, I just dove right into the circle prospecting, picking out a subdivision or condo complex and just developing my database, trying to develop those relationships. I mean, market share is not how many transactions, listings, closings you have compared to the rest of the market. It's how many real relationships you have with property owners in the area. Whatever agent has the most real voice-to-voice -voice relationships with property owners in the area wins. They own all the market share. They might have done as many transactions as the top agent in the area, but they will next year or they will the year after you know, we trade stocks on future earnings of companies and I trade, I trade the stock of an agent on the future, you know, earnings of an agent. And to me, whoever has the most relationships with property owners in the area, what percentage they win. And I realized this really early on. And um, that's why I decided to just circle prospect and try to call every owner in my area, which will never happen, which creates an unlimited resource. You know, like when you think about the market, when you think about the abundance of the market, you can't think about deals in terms of, okay, there's this many deals okay, per year in my area and there's this many agents. And so there's only X amount of deals per agent. Wrong way to look at it. The way to look at it is, is people in your market. They are, don't think of, don't think of real estate in terms of transactions. Think of it in terms of real relationships. Okay. And people. Okay. And you can't talk to every single person in your market ever ever in your life, it'll never happen. So therefore you have an un, unlimited abundance of business because you have to measure your business based on how many relationships you're creating. You know, I don't care how many appointments you're setting or listings you have or, you know, closings. I don't care about any of that. That's a really small piece of the puzzle for me when I'm evaluating your business. I want to know how many people you're talking to per day. And out of that, how many are you connecting with and what is your back uh, your, your, your back system look like to stay in touch with these people and build your brand even further after you've made this great first impression that you don't care about the deal. You just want to help them. So, you know, crazy long answer for a really simple question, but circle prospecting. Well, I appreciate that. Tom, you got a question? Yeah. So this is the second, that was the second or third or fourth time, Ricky, you said helping. You just want to help. So yeah. what's the best way? you found to get that across to people. So what's interesting is dabbling in for sale by owners, expires, absentee owners, circle prospecting, there, there's probably a different answer for each one of them, right? But just being a voice on the phone, what's the best way you feel that you get across to them that you truly do wanna help them? I think the first thing, and it's true across the board, in its tone, body language, speed of voice, uh, intent, you know, I call it FE, friend or family effect, where you make them feel like you're their friend or family member because they are, number one. You treat them as if they are your mom or dad or brother, cousin, best friend from high school, and you have that tone in your voice, the same tone. What you should do next time you're talking to your best friend or, you know, somebody you're very comfortable with, your parents, your siblings, you in the middle of that conversation, you know, uh, take a mental snapshot of that, of that moment where they are so comfortable with you. You're so comfortable with them. Tone of the voice, speed of the voice, body language. Like, are you tense? Are you, are you relaxed? Everything. Take note of the, of the entire feeling that you have. That is the, that is the exact feeling you need to try to, um, 
try to replicate when you're talking to your prospects, you know, and if you watch me make calls, you'll hear that, you know, I just, I sound like I'm talking to you right now when I'm talking to prospects, you know, I'm very calm and relaxed because I'm very confident that I'm there to help. And then they start to hear that. Okay. That's the first part is making enough calls to feel comfortable enough to talk to people like their family. That's, that's part one. Part two is, is when I go into a conversation with a prospect, I'm not trying to see if they want to buy or sell. I literally want to see how they're doing. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? They'll talk to me about the weather for a couple minutes. It's nuts. And so we aren't even talking about real estate. And now we've got them feeling comfortable. Now we want to say, look, I don't want to take up too much of her time, but a house around the corner sold, or I saw your house was for sale by owner. I saw you had your house for sale. You know, I didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you. Or, you know, would you, or would you still sell it? Or, you know, whatever the case may be, but we're not going in for the kill. We're just trying to talk to people like their family and see what we can do to help them. So when you, when you come at them with the right tone, and then you're not just doing a, a phone script that you got from, from YouTube um, that just asks people if they want to buy or sell something. You know what I'm saying? You sound like every other agent and you have a real conversation. Then that's how I do it. That's how I make people feel comfortable. And that's how, that's how I create that bond so quickly, you know, and I'm able, I'm able to capitalize. Thank you. Very good. Cool. I got another question. So what is your recommendation? Okay. So I'm an agent and um, you're coaching me or whatever. You're just my friend. What would you recommend that as far as from a daily contacts perspective, like what is enough calls? What is enough contacts for somebody who maybe doesn't have a big listing, listing inventory, maybe in closing six, seven deals a year. They're not, they're not hitting their goals or not reaching their potential. Is there a recommendation that you say, listen, dude, you need to be here every single day for you to reach the success that you want? Do you have a recommendation like that? Well, first off, it doesn't matter how many listings you have or closings or anything like that. You can start from day one with nothing and it's the same, same strategy. You could be at, you know, a hundred deals a year, same strategy. Um, but I, I, I believe in the three by three, three hours a day, three days a week nine to 12, Monday through Friday is, is minimum. That's just minimum. Now, if you have if any downtime you have should be filled up with more calls. You know, if you have time Tuesday evening, you're not doing anything. Let's make calls. We're going to stay busy. If you don't have anything to do Thursday, we'll make more calls. Any downtime brings it, it, it's time to make more calls. But the three by three is so interesting because we're not, again, we're not worried about the results. We don't care how many, how many contacts, how many dials. We just want to put the work in. If we put the work in, then the results will happen. But with the three by three, it's really cool because if Tuesday you have to show property that morning and you end up showing the whole day, well, we got Thursday and Friday to try to make that, you know, we have time on the back of the, we, we've set ourselves up where we have time on the, at the end of the week to make up that session. And so we want to do nine hours minimum. That's just minimum three by three. And if we do that consistently for a couple years, we're going to be a monster agent. We're going to be a powerhouse. As long as you have the right intent, as long as you're adapting as you go, figuring out what works, what doesn't work, tweaking. Um, and like I say, you have something on the back end to, to capitalize on building brand further with the people that you talk to. If you don't have that, then you're just wasting your time anyway. Um, but you know, nine hours minimum per week. And that it's not like a number of contents, I, I, contacts. I like to, um, I like to think 20 or 30, you know, you talk to 20 or 30 people. I'd like to say that, you know, that's a good number, but at the end of the day, I would rather you have eight or let's say four really good conversations than, you know, 30 really okay conversations. Cause you're rushing through it. I think that, I think that the biggest thing is, is we need to think speed until we get in front of the client. Now we're thinking quality, you know, speed to the next call, speed to the next appointment, speed, 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 speed. But when we're there showing the property or we get somebody on the phone, now, now the world stops. Let's just spend as much time and let's slow down and let's listen. A lot of people don't hear clients when they're telling them stuff that's really important. You know, they're telling them they want to do a deal or they have this or they have that. 
but the agent's just kind of nervous, so they're just going through the through the script really fast, and they miss the entire point of the call, which was to be open minded and help these people do what they want to do. So makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. And just so I'm hearing you clear, regardless of production, really the job that never stops two years in the business, 20 years in the business mm -hmm. is the three by three, right? It's that's the job. Yeah, I say so. I say so, you know, especially if, you know, especially if you're at a point in your business where you're trying to take it to another level, you know, there's a lot of 20 year agents that come to me and want to kind of reinvent their business and stuff, you know, um, I've done such a good job of making so many calls and building my brand so well with, you know, with those people, you know, that I'm at such a high level of past clients and referrals and just business just pouring in, you know? And so, but if the market crashes tomorrow, I'll just get on the phone, you know, like any downtime, you know, if the market transitions or if it slows down in the winter or, you know, you never slow down. Now that's what separates the good agents and the great agents. You know, the, the great agents never slow down. You know, you'll see the good agents that do really well. You know, it slows down in the winter time. They'll take off. They'll go to a lot of Halloween parties and stuff. And, you know, they'll take a couple of weeks off here. They'll do a couple of vacations and, and you'll see me on Instagram, just straight getting it, you know, showing properties, making calls, you know, creating content. Um, you know, while they're slowing down, that's when you need to speed up and that's how you close the gap on people. That's how you become the best agent in your area is by outworking everyone. When the market slows down, when the market crashes, you know, when all the other agents are laying down, you know, that's when we catch up to them. Love it. Makes a ton of sense. All right. Who else has some questions out there for Ricky? If you do just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. And if not, I've got more. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead, Tom. Yep. Unmute yourself. Yep. Yeah. So, Ricky, one of the things you said was um, the system to make sure you can continue those relationships. So, it's your follow up system. Mm -hmm. Is there anything, any follow up system specifically that you hang your hat on that works well for you? Not, not necessarily the computer system. I'm talking about the follow-up strategy or the schedule or whatever it might be I just do a weekly email okay every week every every Wednesday since 2007 um, never missed a beat it's original content very few words doesn't take a lot of their time it's got massive value massive information and um, you know it's consistent see when you do something like that it shows your client how hardworking, dependable, consistent, professional, knowledgeable, like it does all that for you. And when they see it come every single week like clockwork, they think, man, this guy's consistent, he's dependable, he's hardworking. You know, I think this is our agent. And this is after you've talked to him on the phone and gave him a really good impression. Now, boom, they get this email every week. You know, and even if they don't open it, they saw it in their inbox. You know, a lot of people are, are put too much weight on engagement on social media and open rates for emails. And really that's that the open rates and stuff and engagement rates are, that's only a small part of it. You know, impressions mean a whole lot and nobody's really valuing that. Um, you know, so when people see it in their inbox, they're not ready. Three years later, they are, they saw it in their inbox for three years. Now they start opening it and they call me three weeks later, ready to do something. So, I think you have to have just faith in the process. You have to understand too, closings happen every single day, mm -hmm. regardless of what the market does. In any market conditions, every market around the world, closings happen every single day. And so when you realize that, it kind of gives you a sense of relief and it takes a little pressure off. And now it's like, we don't have to convert every lead. If they're not ready, then that's fine. We're gonna get them when they are, if we're doing what we're supposed to do. And there's no system out there that's gonna get every single deal. If there were, I would have already figured it out and none of you would have jobs. You know what I'm saying? Love it. Jim, you got another question? Thank you. Uh, you know, like back to your, to your circle prospecting and doing that, when you have those conversations, um, you know, what, is that, what does that conversation sound like initially when it's someone you haven't talked to before? Same as I just said a while ago. 
how are you doing? I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? You let them talk. You know, don't want to take up too much of your time. A house around the corner sold. Didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you. No, cool. Is there an agent you would work with? No, well, look, I'm sure at some point in the future, you're going to do something, right? Cool. I'd love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you? Okay, cool. What's your email address? You know, it's all about tone. It's not, it, you know, it comes back to that old saying of it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Too many people are putting too much weight on what we're saying and they're not valuing how they're saying it. They're making, they're making a thousand calls and not getting much results and saying this doesn't work. When a thousand calls is not even breaking the ice of what of where of the experience you need on the phone to get to where you're saying it how you need to say it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, how you're what you're saying is very important, of course, but you know, how you say it and what what your what the goal really is, you know, too many too many goals are just trying to get somebody to do something. And I think that you create a lot more business by not trying to get people to do stuff and just finding out how you can help them. You know, it's reverse psychology. I love it. Yeah. We talk about that a lot is, is, you know, it's everyone's after Brandon, what's the best script Brandon? What's the best material? It's not the script. It's not the words. It's not any of those things. It's how we make people feel. I love that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the script is part of it. There's no doubt. I mean, you, I, 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 I don't like the, you know, you know, Hey, how are you doing? Have you considered selling your house? Okay. If not, then who do you know? I yeah. hate that. But you know, so the script is part of it, but you can even use that script the right way and win because there are people that do win with that script, you know? So right. they just don't win as big because the thing is, is so many prospects are running away when they hear those words they might get a couple and they think, oh, this is, this is the magic, but they don't realize how much business they actually lost of people that ran away or hung up or just said no thanks when they could have created a relationship with that person that turns into 10 or 20 deals to them over the life of their career, you know, that they're throwing away. Question around expectations, right? So not that, let's just pretend uh, an agent gets in the business, they come work for you, regardless of what, you know, how that the details there would work, what would your expectations be around somebody who's getting after it, right? So we take that, uh, assume that the agent's getting after it day in and day out, they're putting forth the effort, they're putting forth the calls. What expectations do you give an agent around, hey, when, uh, what should I plan for, Ricky? When can I expect for this thing to start to manifest itself um, mm -hmm. where I find myself in consistent, um, getting deals, getting business. How long does it take? Does it take 30 days? Does it take two years? What does it typically take? I've seen agents come in after a month and get three listings and close one of them, you know, um, and tons of people like that. And I've seen agents who come in and do the exact same thing those agents did and never sell anything and have to get out of the business after a year. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is literally the biggest thing is, is, the the really great agents that end up being the top producers and number ones and all this, they knew without a doubt that they were going to be the top agents in the area. The day they got their license, before they even got their license, they knew there was not a doubt is a hundred percent. They're going to be the best, you know, and that that's not all of it. Of course, there's a lot of people that believe very few people put the work behind it that needs to happen. But, um, but the, but the ones that do definitely a common denominator is the fact that there was never a shadow of a doubt that they were going to be the top agent. I mean, me, you know, I, there were, I, I wasn't worried about it at all. Like through everything, losing everything, all this stuff. Like I knew without a doubt, I was going to be the best agent out there. And that's the way you have to be. You just have to believe that it's going to happen and quit worrying about the results, you know, and it'll happen. You know, you have to be patient. It'll happen when it happens, but it's different for everybody. You know, I wish there was a cookie cutter or a, an equation or something I could tell everybody of what to expect or how long it's going to take you to do a deal. But they're literally agents that do deals the first week. And there's agents that never do deals that I think are going to crush it. You know, I, I quit trying to figure out who's going to succeed and who's not going to succeed. 
because I <laughs> agents that I think will never make it, you know, get 30 listings in their first 60 days and agents that, um, agents that, that, that I think are going to crush it. They, they suck. I mean, it, it's, it's the craziest thing ever. So I would say just literally just believe in yourself and, um, you know, don't give up and work hard and try to adapt and try to learn from the top producers, you know, watch what they're doing and outwork everybody. No, that's great advice. Great advice. Cool. All right. Listen, any other questions you guys have for Ricky? If you do just unmute yourself and ask away. You say we're live on Facebook. We are. Are there any questions in the, on the chat? Yeah, I'm going to check right now. Hold on one second. How's it being a dad? Not there yet. Two months away. Oh, two more months. All right, got it. That's exciting. November 18th. You guys having a boy or a girl or are you not finding out? Girl. Love it. I got three girls, so. Really excited. That's awesome, man. All right, let me check the chat real quick. How are you pacing for this year? How's your business pacing? About the same as the last two years, you know, 1 to 1.1. Love it. Somewhere in there. That's great, dude. I don't know how I'll end up really. It's been so busy over the last month or so. It's All been right. kind of crazy. All right. Let's see. Well, yeah. I, we don't have a, I have a question, Ricky. Um, who, who do you have? If that's okay, Brandon, is that okay? Yeah, you're good. All right. Who, um, who do you have supporting? What's your support system look like? On your team? Uh, just an assistant. You have one assistant? Mm hmm That's impressive. <laughs> and you say one, 1.1, 1. 1. is that obviously GCI? Yeah. Yeah, but I have, I have hardly any expenses because I don't buy leads. I don't have a team. I don't really pay. I don't really do a lot of advertising, you know, as far as money goes. So, I mean, I don't really have much expense either. You just use your uh, – you just – make the calls and follow up appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the most efficient thing you can do. Like not only are calls and emails, the most efficient thing to do, like the most, not efficient, the most effective, the most effective thing you can do. Cause you're talking to the people who own the properties, you know, do you, do you want to talk to people who wish they owned, you know, and, sp and spend a hundred, 200, $300 a pop, you know, or do you just want to just get the phone number of people who already own the house for like two cents? you know what I'm saying? And call them and create those relationships. It's the most effective thing you can do. And it's the most efficient thing you can do financially. Because like I say, it's like two cents a number. Emails are basically free. I mean, there's nothing in the world better than the way that I do the business in terms of efficiency, you know, affordability, you know, effectiveness. It's just, you know, I have no team. I have really no expenses. I mean, no, other than just your basic, you know, expenses. So are you, what, what's your uh, ratio of listings to buyers? Do you think last year was about 50, 50 this year? It's always been about 80, 20, you know, 80% listings. But last year was 50, 50 as the market shifted this year, it's kind of evened out back a little bit. I'm think I'm at 60 or 70% listings. So, and you take them out yourselves if they're buyers. Yeah. I show every property, go to every listing, every listing appointment, um, every closing, every inspection, negotiate every deal, do all that. Do you find time to sleep? <laughs> oh yeah, man. I sleep really well. I go, to sleep, <laughs> I go to sleep at 10 every night, wake up at four 30, answer every DM on Instagram. Then I go to the gym. Um, you know, I mean, I'm be done, right? Hmm? It can be done, right? If you're efficient, effective, you're taking yeah, the thing is, is people, they clog their business up with, you know, leads that cost too much. So they feel like they have to try to convert every lead because they spent so much money on the leads and these leads aren't going to convert, but you aren't trying, you shouldn't be trying to convert every lead anyway, you know, and then you spend so much time on that. Then you get something under contract, you know, you got three pending deals and four listings and you're done. You know, you spend all your time worrying about that when, you know, that, you know, my 20 pending deals right now literally take me about 10 minutes a week just to look at them and see, okay, where do I, what, what's up? Okay. They all look good. Cool. 
or make one or two phone calls, make sure everything's cool. And then I'm right back to trying to like prospect and figure out where, where the next person I'm going to help is coming from. So, I mean, it's, you have to prioritize and you have to let the process take care of itself. You know, if you're going to do the kind of numbers I'm doing by yourself, you have to be the kind of person that doesn't worry about much. You know, I'm not worried if a deal falls through. I'm not worried if I didn't handle this or handle that. I try my best. People know that I'm working. Okay. And so they'll let a lot of stuff slide. If something does get slipped through the cracks, they're like, Oh, no, no problem. We know that you're, you know, we know that you're working, you know, we know that it wasn't because you were sleeping or anything. So, you know, everybody loves a hard worker. And uh, if you're just efficient and work hard and people know that, um, you know, then they'll let a lot of stuff slide. But I don't really have a lot of stuff slide anyway. I woke up this morning and uh, did all that stuff, you know, answered all the DMs and went to the gym. And I met a buyer at 8 o'clock to look at an AC at a unit he's buying real quick just to make sure it looked good. And then I went and showed about five condos you know, before I came here to do this. So, and I'll do a podcast after this and then I'll go back and make some calls at the office, you know, for the rest of the day. So, you know, I, I really love it because I do what I want to do. All this stuff is what I want to do. I want to show property. I want to do podcasts. I want to do all the things that I'm doing are literally because I want to do them. Here's the thought, Ricky. Surely you're making a million dollars a year selling real estate. Surely you've got fancy CRMs and fancy websites and fancy apps on your phone and fancy everything, right? Or is your business pretty simple? I don't have a CRM. Yeah. So talk through that, that belief system of keeping things super simple that you and I have talked about in the past. Well, I mean, dude, I got, all, if somebody, if I put my clients in my phone as a contact, I don't know what else I need. You know what I'm saying? They're in my phone. So many agents, you talk about time management. The reason I bring this up, I'm being facetious, obviously. You're making a million dollars a year. There are agents in the world that have to close their first deal that spend 20, 30 hours a week making sure the buttons on their website are the right, the right colors and they got the fanciest presentations and all that stuff. Well, I don't even have a listing presentation. I literally show up with just comps and a blank listing. I look at the property, see why they're selling and we sign a listing agreement. Like they know, you know, they can tell by the tone of my voice that I'm not there to play around. I'm there to get stuff done. Yeah. Um, but no, there's no presentation. Pre-listing packages are, you know, that's something that people do that compete against me and lose. You know, because I'm going to go back to the office and make phone calls while they're making more pre-listing packages and presentations and all that stuff and, you know, working on their CRMs and everything. Like, while they're organizing their CRM, I'm out there selling and closing properties. So, I mean, it's just, like, I'm not a very organized person, but I find it as a pretty incredible strength because it opens up so much time. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I mean, I can, hire, I can hire a guy to clean my truck and, you know, I don't, I just... I care about what's important, which is who can I help today? I love it. Yeah. I mean, I get a lot of feedback and I just, it's hard, right? It's agents sometimes worry about the wrong things. You know what I mean? What color this thing should be and how the business card feels and all this stuff. And it's like, what does that have to do with selling houses? You know, It goes I mean? back to the very first question you asked me about, um, about making calls. And I'm like, what else is there to do? There's nothing else to do. Zero. When I, when I got back in the business after losing everything, going homeless for a while, I, uh, I didn't have business cards. I didn't have a website. I didn't have any of that stuff. I was literally just calling people, seeing what I can do to help you. Closing deals. No website, no nothing. After I closed a couple deals, I bought a website. 50 bucks a month. It looked like crap. It was horrible. Yeah. But, you know, you have to, you have to prioritize what is important and what is not. And when, when you don't have any deals going on, the only thing that's the most important is finding more people to fill up your pipeline, your database to help buy and sell properties. And it's really cool because when you look at it that way and do it, as you're talking to people and trying to create these relationships and build your pipeline, you're going to run into people that want to do deals right now. And you're also going to run into a lot of people that love you a lot, but don't want to do a deal yet. So that's future business. So you're building your business for now to pay the bills and future at the same time. And yeah. it snowballs. It's a snowball. I love it. Yeah. I think a lot of agents get confused on being busy versus being productive. 
So I love that answer, right? I'm busy doing all this stuff, Brandon. I got all this stuff to do. You know what I mean? It's like, well, how many appointments did you go on this week? Well, I didn't go on any. So anyway, that's a whole nother topic. All right, what other questions do you guys have? We got one of the, the, the world's top real estate agents on this live stream right now. Like, take advantage. Like, this dude is earning a million dollars a year selling real estate by himself. No fancy team, no fancy. Do you even have a business card these days? I don't, I'm, I'm going to stop beating that, but I just, this whole creative avoidance thing, I've been trying to coach agents through my whole life. It's hard. I do, but I just, I let my assistant kind of use them to, you know, put in letters and whatever else she uses it for. Got it. All right. I'm going to give one more opportunity to ask questions because we've had him on for 45 minutes. And then if not, we're going to let him go back to selling houses. Last call. Cool. Ricky, dude, thank you so much. I will send this to you via a Dropbox email. Um, and then again, man, good luck on your baby and uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're inspiring an industry and I can't thank you enough for the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Really good questions. Gets, it motivates me hearing myself say some of this stuff. So <laughs> Great, I'm going to get back to it, guys. Let's get after it, Thanks, Ricky. Later. Thank you. Bye.